Good evening, hel um, hello kids. My name is Samiha Sauer and welcome to our week five, Modern Age from Islamic Perspective. I hope you guys are doing fine. This week, we are going to talk about Soviet Union and the People's of Republic. Now, after the Russian Revolution, the communist leader Lenin was seen as a hero by many Russians. And then Lenin was seen as a hero by many Russians, but Lenin did not rule the new Soviet Union for long. From 1922, he was often unwell, and he actually died in 1924. After Lenin's death, several leading communists struggled for power. One of these men was uh, Joseph Stalin. Now, this is a map of Russia. I just wanted you guys to just have a look. Uh, this is the Russian Empire in 1905. Now, one of these men was Joseph Stalin. He was a secretary of Communist Party. Stalin had, um, so, sorry, I was funny saying. Okay, so Stalin had many friends in the party and he used them to get rid of his rivals. So by 1928, so within four years, actually, Stalin had complete control of the country. Now the factories, um, so factories and workers. So what what was happening that time? So Stalin launched a five year plan to turn the Soviet Union into a modern industrial country. He forced people to leave their villages and work in factories in the city. Now factories were expected to produce much more than before, and workers who did not work fa fast enough were really punished like criminals. And the farms and the pigeons. So what was happening there? To keep the factory workers well fed, now Stalin needed to recognize, um, reorganize, sorry, reorganize farming. Pigeons, farmers were told to give up their tiny strips of land. And these strips were then joined together to create a vast farm called collective farms. The pigeons were paid to work on the farms and the crops were grew were sold to the government at a very low price. So obviously the farmers were not happy because first they had a little, maybe they had a little piece of tiny piece of land. Now they had to give that up. And Salin decided that we, I'm going to connect all these small little farmlands and then I'm gonna make it big and vast farm. And then we're gonna grow a lot of crops. And then he's gonna buy those crops from those uh, farmers in a very low price so that he can fit his factory workers, right? But people were not happy to do that. Now, if we um, go into there, now, um, so these are the main points of Soviet Union. I'm just trying to talk a little bit of in detail of so actually what was happening, right? So we came to this point. So when Lenin, Lenin died, the other member of the Communist Party fought over being the leader. Stalin killed everyone against him and he became the leader. He forced people to work in the factories, uh, forced farmers to give up their give up their land. Now there is a group. It's called um, they is, they were known as um, it's called Kulaks, K U L A K S. Um, so they they owned their own land. Not everybody had their own land that time. So they refused to give up Stalin's. Um, uh, proposal like they said no i'm not going to give our lands so stalin used his force millions of kulaks were arrested that time and sent to live in a very remote parts of the soviet union there they had to work in a harsh prison camps where many of them died in a very cold and hunger and exhaustions now many pigeons they destroyed their own crops and killed their animals rather than hand them over to collective farms. This meant that there, there was a terrible shortage of food and millions of people actually died in hunger that time. Okay, now removing the enemies. So that brings to our fourth point in our slide. So 19, by 1934, Stalin was really worried that his enemies were plotting against him. So he decided to get rid of them. Anyone who criticized him was arrested by the secret police and executed or sent to a prison camp. 
as many as 24 million people may have died in this time in these brutal attacks known as purges. Okay, now what happened? At first, Stalin supported Hitler. We know, um, inshallah, when we talk about Second World War and we get into our next few weeks, it's gonna um, it's gonna make more sense for you guys. But I want you guys to start familiarizing. So, what was happening? So, by 1941, the Soviet Union was invaded by Germany. Okay. After many uh, fierce battles and much suffering, the Soviet army drove the Germans back across Eastern Europe and set up a new block of communist countries. Now, counting the cost. Now, what was happening? So many new hospitals were built and children got free education that time. Because under Stalin, the Soviet Union became a very strong industrial country. With they had many factories, steel workers, power stations, and railways. And he built a lot of new hospitals, and all these children were given a free education that time. But Stalin indeed was a very ruthless leader. By the time he died, he had caused the death of uh, as many as forty million Soviet people. Now. This was about Stalin. So a uh, question, what was the Stalin's five-year plan all about? So if you remember what I was talking, that his plan was he's going to make the current country modern, uh, catch up with the technology and industry and revolution that was going on around that time. And did his plan work? Well, as we discussed in our class, that some of you said that, no, his plan did not work. And some of you guys said the plan worked. So the so, so why his plan did not work? Well, he killed a lot of his people, right? His plan worked materialistically because most because he really made a lot of factories, steel workers, power stations and railways and hospitals and a lot of things. Yes, but then he killed his own people, right? People didn't have their right to talk about it. The people had to give the, give up their own lands and sometimes the people they actually burnt their own crops rather than selling it to the Stalin. So yes, as a leader, he was not he he was not loved by his people and people were not happy with him. So if you think about that aspect, definitely he did his plan didn't work. But if you look into if you only see the worldview of materialistic way, yes, his plan worked that he was able to build a lot of his stuff, right? Um, so, important date, in 1924, uh, Lenin died. Stalin began a five-year plan to modernize industry and farming. 1928, collective farms are set up. In 1932-1933, millions die in a very terrible famine. And that time, people were really, you know, they, they would rather hand burn their food and kill their animals rather than hand over the collective farms. Now, by 1934, uh, Lenin started to worry that their enemies were plotting against him. So he started killing anyone who is actually, he was doubting everybody. By 1941 and 45, Soviet Union is at war with Germany. And 1953, Stalin died. So I want you guys to start watching this video. And I'm going to stop share here my slides. So I will be able to... Uh, show the video here let me just uh, help give me a moment so rise of stalin i hope you guys are able to watch this through the recording <laughs> Early in the 20th century, Russia had a lot of problems. Government mismanagement, bad military defeats, rising inflation, and food shortages. The peasantry demanded more land, as the gap between the wealthy elite and the poor masses grew wider. There were general strikes and uprisings in the streets. The conditions were right for revolution. It came to a head on March the 12th, 1917, when the opponents of Tsar Nicholas II, taking advantage of the unrest, 
forced him to abdicate the throne. One of the groups competing for power were the Bolsheviks, formed by Vladimir Ilyich Ulyanov, who would become known as Vladimir Lenin. The Bolsheviks were a revolutionary party that believed the working classes would liberate themselves from the economic and political control of the ruling class and establish a socialist society based on equality. The rise of the Bolsheviks was rapid, in part because the provisional government that was installed until elections were held had postponed much needed land reform and against popular opinion kept Russia in the First World War. Soviets, councils elected by workers and soldiers, started to appear in more major cities as they gained popularity. Lenin wanted to form a parliament of these Soviets to rule Russia. The Bolsheviks would then control the Soviets. Lenin returned from exile in Western Europe in April 1917. The Bolsheviks seized power in the October Revolution and established the Soviet Union. When Lenin died in 1924, there was no succession plan for a new leader. This led to an internal power struggle between Trotsky and Stalin. Trotsky was head of the Military Revolutionary Committee and Stalin, General Secretary of the party. Trotsky wanted permanent world revolution and encouraged the working classes or proletariat around the world to rise up, while Stalin pushed for socialism in one country. He wanted to secure the communist regime in Russia before looking outward. Stalin's position as general secretary enabled him to put supporters in powerful party positions, and he was ultimately able to secure the leadership. Trotsky was expelled from the party and then the Soviet Union. Years later in exile in Mexico, he was assassinated most likely on Stalin's orders. The Communist Party sought total control over everything, the totalitarian state. In 1927, Stalin introduced the first five-year plan designed to turn the nation into a major industrial power within five years. Central planning by the government determined where to build factories and what crops to grow. A policy of collectivization meant peasants were forced to pool their land into government-owned and operated farms. Any resistance to the regime was dealt with brutal and deadly force. Millions of farmers were exiled to labor camps in Siberia or simply executed. Stalin became increasingly dictatorial using propaganda and his secret police to terrorize the people and eliminate potential threats within the party. In Stalin's reign of terror from 1929 to 1930, more than three million people were killed. Life got progressively worse for the average Russian as food and everyday goods became increasingly scarce. Stalin led the Soviet Union through the Second World War. Many millions of his people were killed, but the Soviets were instrumental along with the Allies in defeating Germany. Stalin remained in power until his death from a massive heart attack in 1953. All right, so that was our... Hi, I'm John Green, and this is Crash Course oh, European oh, History. So despite on. improvement in living conditions... All right, so after the video, let's uh, go back to our PowerPoint slide. And so that was the Soviet Union, a quick uh, video. Now we talked about the main points of Soviet Union, important dates. So let's move on to our next topic. So we're going to move into China and uh, actually the People's of Republic. Now, since 1644, we know that China had been ruled by a family of powerful emperors called um, Manchus. 
By 1900, the Manchus were very unpopular, but they refused to change the way the country was run. So if you take uh, take the lesson in Middle Age and ancient time and all these, um, that covers the history of uh, Manchus and all those. So I'm not going to get into that. We are dealing here more of like a modern age. So after 1900, that's where we're going to focus. So, But 1911, a revolution broke out, a group of nationalists called the um, Kyomintang. They seized the power and set up a republic. Okay, So they set up a republic. Um, now the Kuomintang leaders found it hard to bring the country under control. But by 1982, they governed most of China. So if you re- if you just remember, we were talking about what was happening in Russia that time, right? So by 1928, Lenin actually c- took control over Russia. So the same time, the China Ch- in China, the Kuomintang leaders they were able to control. Uh, they were able to most of the China to control most of the China. Now, not everybody supported. Uh, Kuomintang, the Chinese Communist Party wanted China to be run by workers and pageants rather than by the rich people. So there was another group of communists led by Mao Mao Zedong, uh, Mao Zedong actually, set up their own government um, in in the south side of the China. So that's why I was trying to Put this map in here. So if you look into this, um, the south part of the China, it says um, this one, the way you say it, uh, Jiangxi. So in the Jiangxi area, in the south of the um, China, that group, uh, it was led by Mao Mao, uh, Zedong. So that's where they set up their own government. So if you look into that, that in a People's Republic, um, so that in China, there are actually three group of people. So the first is emperor family, the Manchus. So the second is Kuomintang. They were nationalist. And the third party is the Communist Party. All right. So then now, let, now let, let's move on. Now, I think this is what I was talking about. Yes, so since 1664, China had been ruled by powerful family, and then by 1900, it was unpopular, and then ruling the, um, they refused to change the way, and 1911, a revolution broke, and Kuomintang governed most of the uh, country by 1928. We will all watch these two videos after, uh, a little bit after. Let's go move on to the next topic. Um, So communism. All right. So what is communism? Communism is a type of government government or an economic system. So what is economic system? A way of creating and sharing wealth in your country or, you know, in an organization or somewhere that's called economic system. In a communism um, idea, no one owns any land or any factories or machineries. In a government or the whole community owns these things and everyone is supposed to share their wealth that they create. All right. Now, so as we, I was talking about uh, Mao Zedong, one group of the communist leaders, so that uh, who who actually led one of the one of the group of the communists, he set up uh, their own government in uh, in Jiangxi in the south area. Okay. Now, let's uh, watch about. I'm just going to. We're going to watch two more with two or three more videos here, and then we will talk about um, again. Okay, let's. Uh, I'm just going to share videos again. Just bear with me. Let's see how. What can I do here? Mao Zedong. Okay, let's learn about him first, watch about him, and then we'll switch into uh, how the rise of Communist Party. Mao Zedong was the founder of the People's Republic of China. Born in Shaoshan in the Hunan province, Mao trained as a teacher and then began working in the Beijing University Library, where he started reading Marxist literature. He helped to found the Chinese Communist Party in 1921 after the Communist Party was victorious in a civil war against the ruling party, the Kuomintang, 
and in 1949 Mao founded the People's Republic of China. Mao's reformation of Chinese society started with the government taking state ownership of industry and farming, and any opposition to these plans was met with ruthless law enforcement using any action Mao considered necessary. In 1958 Mao launched the Great Leap Forward scheme, designed to mobilize labor forces and improve production, but the scheme failed and millions died from the famine resulting from Mao's plans. In 1966, to try and improve his public opinion, Mao launched the Cultural Revolution in an attempt to remove impure elements of society. As a direct result of his actions, 1.5 million people were killed and much of China's cultural heritage was destroyed. During Mao's reign, it is estimated that 40 to 70 million people died as a result of his policies. Despite this, his economic, technological and cultural policies laid the foundations for modern China and transformed the country into an industrial world power. He is regarded in China as the savior of the Chinese nation. Okay, so that was uh, about Mao Zedong. Now let's see the rise of communism. I hope you guys can see this. Uh, you know, where did it go? Peasants were dying in their thousands of disease and starvation. And in these desperate times arose a man of destiny. Few men in history are still so controversial, few so adored and so reviled. Mao Zedong. Mao was born in 1893, the son of a well-off peasant. He left high school at 25, having trained as a primary school teacher. He was haunted by childhood memories of the killing of famine-stricken protesters in his hometown. And then he discovered communism. And then look at this, these are the early struggles, the early mobilization of the peasants. His voracious reading at first led him to European socialism and then to violent revolution. He began as a guerrilla leader in a failed communist rising in his native Hunan and then in setting up independent communist enclaves, Soviets, deep in the countryside. With that, the nationalist government, now under Prime Minister Chiang Kai-shek, decided to wipe out the communists. Thousands were killed, including Mao's wife and sister. In 1934, the survivors embarked on what became known as the Long March, a 6,000-mile trek to northwest China. Only 8,000, about a tenth of them, survived. And they made their base at Yan'an. A nowhere place in a bleak countryside, it must have seemed at that point that the communist movement in China had reached a dead end. But then, in 1937, the Japanese launched a full-scale invasion of China. Out of such horrors, a national resistance was born. Far away in Yan'an, from a defeated guerrilla army, the communists now found themselves part of a liberation struggle. Mao himself had gained power over the party and emerged as a formidable and ruthless revolutionary. A united front was formed, with the nationalists under Chiang Kai-shek and the communists under Mao, fighting the common enemy, the Japanese. Okay, so that was one of our, so the rise of uh, communism over there. Now the communists take over, uh, I think, uh, that's okay we can watch uh, we can go back to our um, slides and talk about a little bit now as we're talking about the communism and then taking over so now let's talk about also what is uh, capitalism because capitalism often comes the idea um against uh communism so it is the it is so the wealth of nations by Adam Smith, um, this book was written in 1776, and that is actually the, you know, you can, that is actually the beginning of capitalism, the idea. It is an economic system where private individuals own and control most of the fac uh, fac uh, factors of the production, the resource used to produce goods and service. 
an individual also own and run most companies and which compete with other companies for business. So North American uh, side and European, we um, this side has um, the concept of the economic system and the government system is more of capitalism. And um, so I want you guys to have this idea in your head. So what is capitalism? That person individually can own their country, uh, their factory, they can own their land, they can own their companies and business and their home, right? And the other part, the communism, you can't, if no one individually owns anything. So it is the property of the government or a group of the whole country. Now, what is a long march as in the video, the, uh, the rise of the communism we were watching? So it talks about the long march. I haven't started talking about it. So by 1934, the communist communists in uh, Jiangxi, in the south side of the um, China, right? So they were surrounded and attacked by the Kuomintang army. The communists escaped and set off to find a safe place far away from the Kuomintang. This famous journey, which covered a distance of 800 kilometers, is known as the Long March. Out of 100,000 people who set out on the march, 70,000 people actually died on their way. Now, during this long march, the communists had to cross actually 18 mountain ranges, including these mountains in Sichuan in western China. And then the men were wearing the uniform of the communist Red Army, and then marchers are uh, trooping. Uh, sorry, um, marchers were actually, it was a difficult, it was a difficult, um, definitely a difficult long march. So then eventually, so the communist China. So between 1937 and 1945, the China was at a war with Japan. After the war, the struggle uh, between the Communist Party and the Kuomintang continued. In 1949, the communist led by Mao Zedong defeated the uh, Kuomintang and Mao set up the People's Republic of China and took control of the country. So that is in 1949. So now what was happening between 1953 and 1960? So it's called the Great Leap Forward. Because, you know, all these internal clashes, China was getting behind from the rest of the world in terms of technology and all other things. So Mao started a campaign and that campaign was known as the Great Leap Forward. And many pageants were taken away from farm. So same thing, the Russia, what the Russia did, right? Um, Stalin did that. He pulled a lot of people from far agriculture and he put those people into working into industry. The same thing happened here too. So Mao um, did the same thing. Many pigeons were taken away from the farms to work in the factories. This meant that not enough crops were planted and millions of people actually died in hunger. And so, so we have to understand something here, that if you want to do something new, you have to think uh, balance what, balanced because you're trying to catch up with other, um, other things in the world and that's okay, but you have to think about the basic need of the people. So there need to be some people, they need to start growing, still planting and growing the products and the grain and food and crops for the people to eat. No, so now uh, Mao became worried that China was moving away from the true communism. And by 1966, he started a new campaign called the Cultural Revolution. Then he encouraged young people to attack traditional ideas and criticize their teachers and bosses and parents. Because he wanted people to have these ideas of communism. He didn't want people to start learning about new ideas. The schools and universities were closed and educated people were forced to work on the land and groups of teenagers known as Red Guards, um, they used to beat and tortured anyone they thought was against the revolution. Now, after three years of chaos, the army was sent, to, uh, sent in to stop the violence. The Cultural Revolution finally actually came to an end when Ma Ma Mao Zedong actually died. So this is what it was. Um, this is mostly what I had for you guys this week. So this was um, these are our important dates. So 1918. Um, so Kuomintang starts a revolution in China, and Kuomintang sets up a republic. And then there was a long. Sorry, I should have write down here the long march. So the long march. 
and Mao Zedong sets up uh, People's Republic and then Great Leap Forward and uh, Mao Zedong starts Cultural Revolution and Mao Zedong dies. And at home, I want you guys to just learn about the Great Wall of China. You can learn about some fun facts about China and read about China, okay? So these are some ideas in the modern age, uh, what was happening. Um, and this will, this idea of dif what was happening in different parts of the world will give you a complete picture of what was happening that time. So Jazakallah Khair for uh, today's class. And inshallah, we will come back with next week with more. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, stay safe until then.